All right. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So networking is cool again. In, in the past 30 years, we were like boring, right? The only time we got called was when an IP address didn't you know, work, or a network was down, or an app was broken, and it was all network's fault. And now it's no longer the case. We're disaggregated, we are software defined, we're virtualized. You don't know where the fault is. <laughs> so you can't blame us anymore. But what I, what I want to talk about today is uh, where things are heading. And it is an extremely important time for our industry, whether you're working in an enterprise, cloud, or carrier. And so let me walk you through the vision of where things are heading and how we see the world. But before we go there, I want to set some context of open source in general. We always, you know, Jim always talks about this slide and, and you know, he didn't do that yesterday, so I said, let's do it here. But this is important. There's open source projects, 23 plus million developers, you know, over 2,000 of those are here in this room. Uh, billions of lines of code, lots of new projects. Which projects matter? The ones that have a sustainable ecosystem. And those are the ones that we host at Linux Foundation. And we group them into areas, and we all know the acronyms, right? So starting from the left, you got Linux and Node.js and Let's Encrypt and, and sort of more of the platforms, if you may. Moving to data, blockchain, et cetera, right? We talked about the cloud, huge, huge momentum. And then, of course, embedded in IoT, where you have you know, things like Edgex Foundry or automotive-grade Linux, et cetera. And the one on the right is networking, which is what I was going to talk about today. And, and in networking, it's a very interesting proposition because, according to Network World, Linux Foundation hosts eight of the 10 top networking projects or the most important projects. So we have the critical mass to move this industry forward, uh, and I'll tell you how we're doing it. All of the networking vendors, the top ones, are active. Um, with the tipping point reached in terms of the global population participating in open source, lots of millions of dollars being spent on this, all for one simple, simple use case, which is, can I get services faster and more reliable, right? That's it. And it's all the complexity just because of that. So let me sort of walk you through how far we have come. So the past 137 years, ever since the telephone was invented, it was all proprietary solutions, okay? It was bookend from one point to the other. And then the last five years, disaggregation came in. And this word is a heavy word, and it's used left and right by the industry. But what disaggregation means is hardware is separated from software. Components of software are separated from each other with standard APIs. So if you are a hardware engineer, hard to find in this room, but let's say you are a hardware engineer, you're, the way you build hardware is exactly how we're building software these days, with APIs and reusable blocks and modules. And the way hardware is getting built is exactly how software was getting built, right? So, you know, we're, we're kind of disaggregating this world where uh, all these components now have become production ready. They are running some of the most powerful networks in this world globally, okay? And that's what started off last year. And then where we are heading is how do you bring these components together and scale the deployment in a more harmonized manner, okay? So that's kind of where the big, big trends are. And I want to show you visually and architecturally where the challenges lie and what we are trying to do to fix them. On the top, very simple, cloud services, residential services, enterprise services, IoT services. Those are kind of the bulk of the things that everybody makes money on, right? And, and you have uh, you know, the carriers or the operators sort of trying to get the middle part of it. Uh, IoT is still a battle that's being fought right now. Obviously, we talked about the cloud, cloud native services and all that. And on the bottom, you have infrastructure. Very simple. Either you are, have an enterprise data center which has moved to software defined, you have the carrier network, it could be a cable or, a, or, or an MSO, or it could be just a straight cloud. 
And these services and applications are going through a layer of software that goes between these three cylinders at the bottom. And today, it is completely fragment and disjoint manual tooling. Imagine a service that you want to start that goes across these. You got to call, you got to ask, you got to put a request, you got to interface with the web and all that. That tooling is not acceptable in a 5G world. It's mandatory to automate it. You can't have an IoT device on the phone waiting for a service. It's going to come in milliseconds and go off, log, your, log a meter or a device or any of these things and get out, right? Um, so it's mandatory. And the way we want to do that and, and why we want to do that is just the sheer volume that is going to be brought inside the network is just beyond human power. 1,000x the volume, 100x the data rate, 100x the devices. And now it's, it could be a car, it could be an oven, it could be anything. Of course, it'll be a phone, but a lot of things come in. Okay? So that's where we have projects in Linux Foundation that are pulling it all together. The middle part is what I'm going to focus on, which is open network automation, which is a set of projects. Chris just talked about the left side which is cloud automation with applications being developed by the Cloud Foundry platform, where uh, you know, a lot of infrastructure-independent applications are being developed for cloud-native apps. And then, of course, uh, CNCF and, and the automation and the orchestration of cloud-native, right? On the right-hand side, you got the EdgeX Foundry, which is a lot of IoT uh, automation comes in. And then you see that these clouds intersect, right? And there is a reason for that. The network portion of cloud native is the CNI, the cloud native interface, right, or networking interface. And, and we come together there, there. You have to transport policies and orchestration information between apps that are running in a service provider network and in a cloud. There's a lot of requirements that go back and forth between Kubernetes and or our own app and, and uh, networking projects. The same thing is true for the IoT and open network, right, they intersect at what's called mobile edge computing or Mac. And Mark will come after me and you know, he'll talk about some of the innovations that are happening you know, from an Intel perspective in that zone. Very, very Im important and an interesting aspect. So that's kind of where uh, you know, we want to focus and automate things on. So now if I go one level down into the proprietary stack, and, and show you the technologies that are being used to do this. It's very simple from a high-level perspective. The left-hand side is vendor A, you know, the 137 years of work, proprietary work that we all did in networking. Not we, I mean, for those of you who are still alive that long. But uh, you know, you're talking about hardware, silicon layer, then you come into the OS, control plane, management services, and then on the right-hand side, we became horizontalized with these layers disaggregating from each other. And each of these projects, which are sort of the symbols that are coming in, um, aimed at innovating that layer of software. So the hardware became disaggregated, the control became software defined, and all the applications became virtual functions that could run on a standard x86 hardware that could be virtualized and put in any of those cylinders, local enterprise data center, um, public network or public cloud, OK? So given that, what is the landscape looking at? Like Chris put up a slide with all the companies. I'm putting up a slide with just the open source projects. So for those of you who are not familiar with the networking stack, this is fairly st standard all the way from hardware up to software and application. And here is the entire set of open source networking stack. This includes projects from the Linux Foundation, as well as projects outside the Linux Foundation. Now, keep in mind, um, some of these projects are, th there's many choices at each of these layers. So for example, you have two hardware projects outside Linux Foundation that's focusing on, on the hardware openness, open compute and tip, okay? You go up a layer, you're talking about the IO abstraction, the data acceleration. That's where basically take hardware and make sure that the, the amount of traffic 
that's thrown at that hardware can easily go through and accelerate at a very, very high speed level, right? That's kind of the data plane acceleration as we talk. And there's many of these. Some of you might be working on, on, on projects that are like IOWiser, for example. That's a acceleration inside the kernel, right? And, and kind of put it th from that perspective, DBDPK, set up libraries that sort of go into and help projects like FDIO accelerate and, and push a lot of information through a server. So you move up there, obviously, everybody's familiar with the OSs that run on it, and then you get into the control plane, and then the application analytics management layer, which is where bulk of the action is, right? We have solved some of the lower layer problems, but the middle layer and the orchestration and automation is where bulk of the uh, people are focusing on. And by the way, there's projects there, which is kind of ONAP and, and, and OPNFV that kind of cut across the entire thing. I'm also showing the, the containerized version of that sort of in the middle, right, where Cloud Native and Cloud Foundry and OCI fit in, like the Open Container Initiative. And then a very important thing in networking that we need to not, like, ignore our standards, right? Standards have been around forever, and we want to make sure that we harmonize them as much as possible. As you know, you know, it becomes a de facto software, be open source software becomes a de facto standard. And uh, if we can work with the, with the community of, of stand, standards folks and SDO organization, it's much better and much more e effective for the end user. So we're working extremely uh, tightly with these folks. Now, let me focus on a couple of things and have a couple of announcements. So the first one is ONAP, and then the next one is OPNFV. So uh, how many of you in this room have heard about ONAP? Oh, more than I expected. Very good. So this is a very interesting project. It started off with two open source projects, one called eComp and one called OpenO. OpenO was hosted, OpenO stands for Open Orchestration. It was hosted by Linux Foundation. Um, and eComp was kind of uh, an AT&T-led project that also uh, came into the, open, uh, into the Linux Foundation last year. We combined the two. And we combined the two because the community was similar. They were going after the same problems, and we wanted synergies. And so we, when we did that, the value just tripled. Okay? It created really fast automation services for 4G and 5G and businesses. You know, the value was eliminating manual steps and complete design for automation. It's a huge project right now. It's one of the fastest growing networking projects under the Linux Foundation right now. And, it, it, and, and I'll show you some of the uh, ecosystem uh, that uh, has, has, has pushed this. It's pretty much all the vendors. And today, we have over 55% of the global subscribers represented by this project. By the way, just think, think of this. This is six six weeks, uh, six months into the project. 50 plus members growing very, very, very rapidly, okay? Um, I won't go into the details if you're interested. ONAP.org, this wiki. But it's a collection of modules with a very modular architecture that allows for stitching together of these 11 components from design time to runtime, okay? over 10 million lines of code combined. So it's not a trivial project that any one single vendor can do, but it is the most important project to automate the layer of network that, that I've been talking about, okay? Model-driven design, virtual functions, physical functions. It supports all the clouds, so OpenStack, Azure, VMware, uh, you know, working on Kubernetes, working with Kubernetes, et cetera, goes across carriers, okay? Huge community here. Uh, we're talking about uh, 1,500 developers working on this. You know, not a single vendor will be able to do this, and this is just in the last six months. A uh, lot of, lot of uh, great, great contribution, and we are, we are really, really excited about this. Okay? This couple of weeks ago, we just announced partnership with MEF. MEF is the Metro Ethernet Forum. Uh, and think of it this way. When you're going across carriers, so when you're going across network operators, or when you're going, acro going across an enterprise and an operator, or a cloud and an operator, right? The, the, remember the picture I showed you? You need a set of standards-based APIs. Now, there are people like TM Forum and, and MEF that are working on that, and we're going to look at it and adopt a portion of that, 
modify a portion of that, and basically give one set of APIs that connect what is known as BSS systems, right? Or business support systems in the telco world. And it's very, very critical that we all sort of uh, uh, harness the power of, of standards and open source here. So we announced this. And, and so ONAP in general is focused on automation and it is becoming the de facto automation platform. So if you're not already participating or if not, you know, go ahead and do that. Um, it's got full support from a lot of members and developers, and we're leading the harmonization effort. So that's one of the projects. And then the second one that we have a couple of announcements on today is obviously OPNFE. OPNFE, as you know, is um, a cross-community project, and it kind of tests and facilitates the CI CD or test the integration of components. You know, version 3.2 of this works with 4.7 of this, with this, and there's a backward compatibility issue, and et cetera. And it provides that system level test and automation framework for NFV. So, what we're doing is we are announcing today, and the press release just crossed the wire, is announcing OPNFV's latest software release, Euphratis. Now, the most important thing about this is it has container support with Kubernetes orchestration engine. So we're really excited about that. You know, it also has containerized OpenStack integrated in it. Um, along with that cloud-native aspects of OPNFE, we also have enhanced a lot of visibility, a lot of service assurance frameworks. We have provided tools that actually do benchmark, VNF onboarding, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a cross-community continuous integration, XCI as we call it. There's a session on that as well if you want to attend it. But essentially what we are able to do is allow you know, integration and tests to be done constantly and pull in all these components. And clearly you can see there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, support on this uh, and, and we're working with communities like ONAP and ODL and OpenStack to bring it all together, okay? So, I can't go into all the projects, but you can see the amount of energy that is being spent into uh, getting all the uh, networking projects harmonized, and all the standards come together in one umbrella, uh, and that's what we're doing at, at the Linux Foundation. Uh, there's a white paper on the Linux Foundation website uh, that talks about the harmonization story. If you have not already, please download it. It's a great it's a great uh, tutorial on how standards and open source work together and how they can come together. So with that, thank you very much. And if there are any questions, we'll be there on, uh, on the networking floor. Thank you.